doing the work is like it's an interesting one because and it's all semantics anyway so it's just my interpretation of what that is but um you know I almost wonder like is there a difference between do the work and just allow the work to like whenever something comes up that's the time to address it rather than like maybe constantly looking for something that's wrong with you you know what I mean or constantly needing to almost and I've been there my whole 20s like almost have working on yourself be this refuge from your actual life Mm -hmm. and from moving your own life forward in different ways and creating joy and you know finding a job that you love and that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff so it's a balance right yes and it's also validating to know that you're working on yourself or it's Mm -hmm. something that you can kind of whether you say it out loud or you just feel it you're like I'm working on myself yeah but it can become a loop of sorts where it's like whether it's a regular therapy appointment every week Mm -hmm. or whatever it is it's like you're kind of on that that ride Mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, what am I bringing this week? Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, it's like, are you working on yourself because you love yourself or because you Mm -hmm. hate yourself? Mm -hmm. And there's both exist. Yeah. I've worked on myself because I hated myself. I've worked on myself because I love myself. That's what's so hard about all of life. I know. That is the the thing. It's like, we assume that X outcome is because of Y input. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's actually millions of inputs for the same thing. Like the three of us could do the same therapy appointment for exactly different reasons. And it would be a good thing for us at some point in our lives and a bad thing for us at some point in our lives. But all of us are so insecure that we need these like blanket statements. We need like this is always good. This is always bad. This is always right. This is, And it's like actually you just need to tune into the intention behind it Mm -hmm. or the fear or the lack or whatever's Mm -hmm. like driving it. Totally. Um, And you always know. Yes. Totally. That's what Kiki Robinson, our healer, was saying. She's like, you have to look into the heart of the witch for the intention. (laughs) So I was asking because she's a witch. And so I was like asking, I'm like, so what about what people say about witches? Mm -hmm. And she's like, you have to tune into the heart of the witch to know their intention. (laughs) I so agree. It's so cute. I was like, oh, I know. Um, Absolutely. I wanted to talk about um, people were asking, too, about the 2027 shift. What is that? So this is more human design. Yeah. So uh, essentially the idea is that as humans, as a collective, we go through, I guess, like cycles of different karmic lessons or different evolutions. And um, this cycle that we're in now was all about um, building structure and building, um, you know, uh, I guess like helpful um, boundaries and organizations and things that really would help us actually come together. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it, they're approximately 200 year cycles and they kind of switch between being very strategic cycles, very consistent, very um, proactive cycles. And then the next one that follows that will usually be more passive, more receiving, more, um, you know, that kind of thing. And so neither is right or wrong. It just over time as humans, we get the balance. You know what I mean? As like one as one kind of being. And so. Basically, obviously, the intention of building structures would be to support us coming together. But obviously, we've built many that have divided us and not help us come together and actually not serve the purpose, but the entire opposite. And so in 2027, when we're entering into a new era, which that era really depends, how that unfolds really depends on how we finish this one. So people are always asking, like, what's the next one going to be about? It could go. Um, several different ways but what we do know is that all the structures and organizations and groups and collectives and banks and brands and everything that we've built to uh, put above us and that actually have ended up separating us are going to come crumbling down and so that's why in human design they always said it's like the end is always an acceleration because we're, it's like a the pressure to finish to get there to, totally. to complete that karma as a as a human race Mm. and so is it called anything like are the cycles called anything yeah they're called um well they're called cycles okay yeah and so um you know this one we're in was really the whole lesson of it was to foster togetherness and to foster like family and unity and closeness and all those different types of things so like how every human being one of the things in your um, human design uh, chart is your incarnation cross we go through each cycle has an incarnation cross too and so um, this incarnation cross was the one that we're in now is called the cross of planning and planning is about everyone coming together people being so happy because they're like connecting and talking around a table and therefore building things that would help support that 
So anyone that is not um, in that consciousness, all that stuff is going to come kind of kind of come going to come rushing down the one thing that we do know about the start of 2027 it's going to be so much more about the individual and so it's it kind of follows that once you know how to come together and have the support and blah 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 that's when you're free to be so individualized and so different Mm. and so in your um dehomogenization basically and so that's what the emphasis is going to be on 2027 and there are also going to be um different mutations in how our charts look so certain things are going to drop off certain things are going to be emphasized based on you know the qualities that we're going to need more of to be more individualized rather than think about us as like a tribe or a group or a whole was there an energy type that was like uh integral in the build that was the last two 200 years yeah so projectors were actually um i don't want to say invented but the the first projector was at the beginning of this cycle so 1781 um when that was also the year that saturn was discovered and so sorry uranus was discovered and um basically the whole thing is is like projectors came to help people who were you know, doing and building and creating to do things in a slightly different way to tweak, to change, to optimize, to whatever. And so, um, how did you know it was your honest? I just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a space girl. That's insane. <laughs> um, I was like, wow. When it came out of my mouth. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, so projectors were created, invented um, at the beginning of the cycle. And then in the new cycle, we have, they're, call, they're calling them rave children. And rave That's children. That's hilarious. Yeah. Love it. Like I know. Raves. I know, <laughs> right? <hilarious. laughs> I've heard of like rainbow, indigo. This one's like a party one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they'll be, they'll be built completely differently than us um, and have nothing to do genetically with our history. Um, and then there's also the prediction that we're going to get two more energy centers. Right now we have nine <gasps> in human design and we have two more energy centers coming in the palms of our hands. Cool. Yeah. So it's super cool. cool. Yeah. So how are they not already there? What? Like the energy centers in our hands. Well, they, I mean. It's like a chakra, right? Yeah. Oh, so okay. if you speak to. And then to, we'll get some above. We keep getting some more above our heads. Too. Yeah. So if depending on who you speak to, different, um, like especially Indian doctors and healers, they already say we have like 108 chakras or we have like actually each chakra has its own chakra within more that chakras or whatever. So I think like the the point is maybe not to take it as literally as oh they're literally appearing but maybe like we're having more access to them or we're having more awareness to them or we're going to be more connected to them and this is kind of the approach i encourage people to take with the whole of human design is not to be so like literal you know what i mean and not maybe to take it so dogmatically like and also if it rings true for you great but if it doesn't don't like just cherry pick the stuff you like you know i feel like it's always for you it's like projectors like i've been waiting for the invitation like the invitation waiting for the invitation thing it trips everyone up really i feel like whenever i see your stuff everyone's always like should i wait for the invitation yeah (laughs) yeah so it's interesting so right now because because we because i built my own software this year i had the opportunity to change the terms a little bit so that they made a bit more sense to people and I think the whole thing about waiting like generators and manifesting generators waiting to respond as their strategy strategy is just the way that you make things happen in your life the way that you bring success or bring opportunities bring people whatever so um the responding for generators and manifesting generators is wait to respond right um for projectors, it's to wait for an invitation. Lunar, um, uh, reflectors, it's waiting a lunar cycle, right? And I think this whole thing about waiting is like we have a very passive connotation with that word because it means that we are not um, the ones who can initiate or start things up or whatever, right? So, um, you know, I like to say I've really changed my the way that I talk about it instead of saying waiting for an invitation, create invitations, you know, or be invited. And simply what that means is that obviously everything from the outside, whether that is an invitation, whether that is something you're responding to, whether that is people you're informing, that's all you creating that anyway, right? So if you're wanting to be invited as a projector, you have to be radiating. Like I always think of your aura as like your energetic billboard. It's advertising you at all times, right? So if you're saying I have value to give, this is my stuff, I know my shit, blah, 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 then that's going to obviously bring people that are going to go, oh, well, what is it that you know? Can you tell me more about this? Or I want to know, I want to hear, I want help, I want whatever. And so it all starts with you, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think this whole waiting thing is really like, yeah, 
the semantics of it is just not very empowering. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.